These are my streets. This is my neighborhood. We're Kenzo's, baby. As I walk these streets and speak with my neighbors, I continue to hear the same old thing. Richie, I would give anything to get the old neighborhood back. But you know what happened, man. Most people, they just gave up. But not me. It's time to take a stand. Kenzo News will focus on the issues that matter most to the Kensington area. With this camera and this show, I plan to use the power of the press to let the world know Kenzo Pride is alive. I'm Gina Marie. I'm Kenzo. High class Kenzo. Got all my teeth. Emerald Ontario. Give me your comment or opinion or both about Kensington and Somerset since you grew up right around the corner. I mean, it's bad, but I love Kensington, so. What do you expect us out of the Richie Antipuna show today? I expect it to be about Kensington and Kensington Pride. Beaming from the Philly Can 66 satellite to the Philadelphia area, this is Kenzo News, Kensington's first and only news show, starring Kensington's own Richie Antipuna. We're back here today in Port Richmond, Fishtown, Kensington, Port Fishington, or whatever they're calling it this week, in front of what I like to call the Great Wall here. Because it spans from Aramingo Avenue all the way down to Kensington Avenue. Of course, breaking up in between where the streets go through it. On this side of the wall, it appears to be harmless. But if you just go on the other side of this wall, in the over two miles of wasteland that stand behind this wall, and see the people who are there who have nowhere to go but up because they hit... They're way below rock bottom if they end up on these tracks. Uh, it's it's the, the one track line of the rail line that goes from uh, the Wayne Junction all the way down to uh, the Delaware River. So we started our investigation with Norfolk Southern. Who graciously took the time to go through their rail maps and tell us that Norfolk Southern does not own the line so it must be owned by CSX so we called CSX try to get an explanation only to be told that they don't own it either must be Conrail starting to get the picture now so then we call Conrail only to be told that they're a private company owned by none other than CSX and Norfolk Southern it is true <laughs> In the spring of 1997, Norfolk Southern Corporation and CSX Corporation agreed to acquire Conrail through a joint stock purchase. The approved merger plan restructured Conrail into a switching terminal railroad that operates as an agent for its owners, Norfolk Southern and CSX, in the shared assets areas of northern New Jersey, southern New Jersey, Philadelphia, and Detroit. Apparently, when the two companies met and divided 95% of the country's rail network amongst themselves, they did not want to deal with the problem areas. So they agreed to put the four worst areas in the country back under the umbrella of Conrail. And since Conrail was created by the federal government, who are you going to blame? In fact, when we inquired about the engines on the line saying CSX and Norfolk Southern, we were told that they were leased and operated by some of the 1,200 Conrail employees across the country. We tried to have an on-camera interview with Conrail, but had no luck. But we did get a chance to talk with John Broder, Vice President of Corporate Development, regarding the continued problem. He was clear to point out that indeed it was Conrail property and that they have been working closely with the Managing Director for the City and Brother Duda on the problem. But I find the discussion from this point a little bit disturbing because I know that if this problem was even as small as being on my front porch, they'd have my house boarded up, condemned, sold at, at 
sheriff sale or whatever and I'd probably be arrested. So how can they allow a big company to keep destroying our neighborhoods like they're doing? So what we have to do as a community together is fight back. And here's what we're going to do. Our next step is we're going to hit City Hall. We're going to get to the bottom of all this shit. And in the coming weeks, we're going to hope to have some city officials help us in regards to this problem. But in the meantime, it's time for us to do our part. So there's a couple of things we can do as a community to help each other in stopping this. Well, you know the old saying, the squeaky wheel gets the grease, so it's time we all start squeaking. We've got to start calling Conra at 1-800-456-7509 and CSX at 1-800-232-0144. You can also call Norfolk Southern at 1-800-635-5768. Tell them they need to clean up their dump site down here in Port Richmond, Kensington. And, and tell them to keep their Richmond branch in Philadelphia clean and keep the blight out of our neighborhood because we're not going to take it anymore. And you can tell them Richie Antipuna sent you. This is Richie Antipuna report. What are your expectations of the new season for the Richie Antipuna show? Well, from what I heard on the street is uh, now it's going to be family oriented. So I had to come down from here myself to see it. Well, if you remember in our first interview with Deputy Chief David Scott, he mentioned the need to coordinate with the Philadelphia Police Department. So we wanted to try to help him. We requested an interview regarding the corner of Kensington and Somerset, and this was their response. So we changed the focus of the interview to the need to coordinate SEPTA and the Philadelphia Police Department so as to put a constant police present outside the entrance of the station. And this was their response. So we then went to them with our other story about placing a mobile command unit at Kensington and Somerset. And this, again, was their response. In fact, they have failed to respond to any of our requests regarding any of the situations that we went to them about. But here's the thing. There's no problem. Not one complaint was ever called in to the police department. Welcome to the Pennsylvania Blottery, Kensington's weekly number of victims and forgotten Philadelphians. Our weekly results are audited by everyblock.com. Here are tonight's pickpocket three for the 2800 block of Kensington Avenue and surrounding area. Two, one, zero. And now, Felony 4, the game of reported felonies around Kensington and Somerset. Here are tonight's weekly numbers. Zero, 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 zero. And introducing our newest game, Dope 3, where you can win an all-inclusive trip to the beautiful Viaduct Arms. It's a one-way ticket on a horse with no name. Here are tonight's big numbers. Zero. 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 Here once again is tonight's numbers. Our condolences to this week's victims and remember the Blottery benefits shady Pennsylvanians. We highlight the Pennsylvania Blottery to show the community how they're doing their job by reporting the crimes that are going on out there. And as you can see by our earlier numbers, most of them are zero. But it's just like Greg Butcheroni said, the community is letting these crimes go unreported. So no one knows what's going on. So the police will just drive through like nothing's going on because to them it's not if you're not reporting it. The numbers we put on the blottery is from everyblock.com and they're the actual numbers that are being reported. So what can we as a community do to change those numbers? Dial 911, call SEPTA, call somebody. You gotta report the crimes. If they go unreported, they go unchanged. <laughs> What do you think about what's going on at Kensington and Somerset, and what are your opinions or comments? As me, growing up around there, because my grandma lived at being Somerset, it's different from when I was a kid. I mean, it's like zombies walking down there now. I mean, I wish someone would go in there and try to change it somehow. More cop presence, maybe. 
I mean, there's some, but they're not doing anything. They maybe more needs to step in there and do something. Honey, was that our car? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Honey, Was That Our Car? The game show that rewards out-of-town visitors with fabulous prizes, which include what are not limited to Hep C, HIV, herpes, syphilis, and much, much more. Here's how the game works. Kenzo's from the hood have begun videotaping different streets around Kensington. We were so thankful to see so many tourists visiting our town, and this is our way of saying thanks. So, if you spot your car, contact us at honey at richieandpepuna.com. So hurry and email us for your fabulous prize. If you would like to play along at home, get out your cameras and post your video on our game show page at richieandpepuna.com. Click the honey that is our car button and post video. Your video may be chosen to be on an upcoming episode. And that's it for this week's edition of Honey, Is That Our Car? Good night, everybody. My name is Ken Milano. This is Kenzo History. After the uh, initial German and, and Anglo-Saxon type uh, immigration, the Irish start to come. St. Michael's is the first Catholic church built up this way over at 2nd and, uh, and Jefferson. St. Michael's is built in 1831. In 1844, you start to have uh, the potato famine Irish, more like 1845 to 1848 is the potato famine Irish. Uh, a great immigration. A million Irish come to, a couple million Irish come to America, and a good many come to Kensington to work in the textile mills, which uh, became prominent. Kensington is uh, the place for textiles for Philadelphia. And if uh, Philadelphia is the capital of textiles in America, Kensington produces roughly 50% of that textile. The, uh, the Irish settle in the South Kensington area around St. Michael's. Their, their marketplace at the Nanny Goat Market over at uh, 2nd and American Street, uh, right at Master. Uh, this is where the riots took place in May of 1844. Uh, the nativist party, uh, who were native born Americans, a lot of people get confused with American Indians. They were native Americans, native born, that's why they called themselves the nativist party. They were really uh, uh, racist towards the Irish and to the Catholics in particular and uh, tried to uh, open up one of their chapters and have some speeches up in, right in the heart of, of, of Kensington's Irish community at St. Michael's. Uh, it's sort of, uh, I, I compare it to the Ku Klux Klan trying to give a speech up in Harlem and it sort of wouldn't go over. <laughs> and needless to say, riots broke out and for three days riots took place. St. Michael's was burnt down, the Nanny Goat Market was burnt down, the nunnery was burnt down, three blocks of Irish homes were burnt down. Uh, this happened in the later stages of the riot. In the early going, the Irish had the upper hand. They, uh, they had the cover, it was their neighborhood, they were shooting from the windows, and uh, a lot of natives were slaughtered uh, in the early going. But after, after the, uh, the natives uh, regrouped and, and started burning people out, then it became kind of difficult to, to uh, they had the upper hand on that riot. Uh, after the Irish immigration in the 1830s and 1840s, uh, there was uh, some further German immigration in 1854. That was a big high point for German immigration. There was a lot of, a lot of uh, revolutions taking place in Europe at that time, and uh, you had a lot of out-migration. And there's a lot more Germans came into the community. St. Peter's, a Catholic church, was built at 5th and Gerard in the 1840s and then St. Bonnie's was built up on uh, Norris Square and probably around the 1860s, 70s. Uh, the Polish start to come in at this time. Uh, St. Laurentius is the first Polish church built, I believe. That's uh, in Fishtown, Kensington, and it uh, was built in the 18, early 1880s. There was a, a story that says uh, they told for folks it was going to be a German church. Uh, since there were a lot of Germans in the neighborhood, but in fact it was a Polish church. And, uh, I don't know if that was an early prejudice against the Poles or not. The reason, the whole reason for Kensington coming into being, uh, this, uh, in, this estate, the old Fairman, Fairman Mansion that, that, that Palmer purchased, Fairman was a, a deputy surveyor. He had actually been in, in Pennsylvania 
before there was a Pennsylvania. He was here in, in 1670, before Penn uh, got his charter for the Pennsylvania colony. When Penn sent his early officers over, he uh, got Fairman, Thomas Fairman, to become a deputy server under, a surveyor under Thomas Holmes. Fairman had been here earlier, so he had one of these old uh, homes of the Swedes that was here, and that was a, you know, a nice thing when you're starting up a colony to have an actual house. And by 1700 or so, he actually built a brick mansion. It was a, quite a substantial home. William Penn actually thought of uh, acquiring this uh, to be his headquarters. Uh, when Penn com finally comes over, he, uh, he comes to Kensington, uh, or what would become Kensington at that time, it was called Shackamaxon. Uh, which was a corruption of the Indian word Kakamensing, which is a place where the chiefs meet. Shakamaxin had long been a place where the tribal leaders of the different uh, groups, the Indian, Native American groups in the area, would come in the spring and have their tribal council meetings, uh, do some fishing and hunting perhaps, and then in the winter uh, head further into the interior, away from the water where it would have been warmer. Uh, Penn meets with the Indians uh, at today's Penn Treaty Park uh, to have the, the famous Treaty of Friendship, Amity and Friendship. Uh, some historians think the treaty never took place because it wasn't written down. But if you talk to any Native American today who knows their history, they will say it, it was. The, the wampum belt that the Native Americans gave William Penn was the agreement, was the, the sign of friendship uh, from the native people. That wampum belt still exists. It was given to the Historic Society of Pennsylvania uh, by the Penn family in the mid-19th century and now is on, uh, held by the Atwater Kent Museum. What are your comments or opinions about Kensington and Somerset? Uh, once you cross Lehigh from the L's, like another neighborhood, basically. So you can, you know, one, one street to safe, you can step across the street, you can die at any moment, basically. But the people are good people, and, you know, alcohol is very accessible. Drugs on the other street, very accessible. But this side, this is the good side here. That's why I'm here with the crazy leprechaun. The only black person here. Actually, it's two black people here. And that's why I'm on this side of Kensington. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. What, give me your take or your comment or your opinion about, about Kensington and Somerset. The bar or just the neighborhood? The corner. The corner of Kensington and Somerset. The zombies. The, zo oh. <laughs> the zombies. My take is that... This is a very unique part of Philadelphia, and it has a very unique part of the Philadelphia culture. Um, in terms of the zombies, like you go in different parts of the city and you see, you know, different people that's into the drug game, drug addicts or whatever. But I must admit, Kensington and Somerset, the zombies around here, they like no other in the city. Your take, comment, whatever, on Kensington and Somerset. They need to clean it up and get the junkies and drug dealers off the street and the prostitutes. Give me your opinion and or comments on Kensington and Somerset. I don't know, man. Yo, that's like the twilight zone out there, dude. You fuck around. I mean, you, yeah, you mess around out there, you get all wrapped up and stuff, you know what I mean? Like, you, it's, uh, God bless all the people that are stuck out there, for real, man. It's a bad spot, dude. I, I just hope they all can get, get, get their heads together and get off that corner, real, for real. They ain't gonna do nothing but die out there, man. Might as well just straighten up. This is Kensington, a neighborhood in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. It's where I grew up. When I grew up here, this neighborhood was full of industry and jobs. No vacant houses, no empty lots. Everyone looked after their neighbors by way of anything as little as a cup of sugar or a glass of milk. All that's going now, and in a place of neighbors are vacant lots full of trash and used drug paraphernalia. So basically, the people aspect of the neighborhood is just about diminished. And there's only a very small percentage of people left here from when I was a child. 
but they are here, so let's not forget about them. Kensington, Philly, P, Gay is where I'm from. What? Where you can get killed. Yes, from a gun. What? Or get stabbed up. All in your lungs. Yeah. Kensington, Kensington, that's where I'm uh -huh. from. Kensington, Philly, P, Gay is where I'm from. What? Where you can get killed. Yes, from a gun. What? Or get stabbed up. All in your lungs. Yeah. Kensington, Kensington, that's where I'm from. Uh -huh. Where I'm from. Bodies drop all day. Kensington is crazy, forget LA. I done seen it in front of my eyes, in front of my face. Heard of all people getting tired of all in their place. All the snitches calling the cops to crack a case. All the ones you wouldn't know, guess the drug place. All little kids carrying a lot of hate. Damn it, I done seen it all. I done seen the great man rise and fall. Go to the top, then hit the floor. Then come back and pick themselves up the floor. Some don't make it back. Or get a good meal So if you from Kenzo You know how I feel Kensington, Philly, P, Gay is where I'm from Where you can get killed Yes, from a gun Go get stabbed up All in your lungs Well, speaking of the Homeland Security uh, grant, how specifically has it helped SEPTA and its riders feel safe? Well, it's um, increased the visibility of our police officers on the transit system. Um, it's increased the visibility of our Special Operations Response Team, which is our uh, counterterrorism unit, um, not only uh, at Somerset Station, but along the Market Frankfurt Line and Board Street Line. Um, and throughout the region, in fact. But um, our officers, not just the uh, Special Operations Response Team um, and K-9 unit, but our regular patrol unit uh, do pay particular attention to Somerset Station. And if you uh, look at the data and statistics regarding the numbers of citations uh, and uh, coal violation notices uh, that have been issued, uh, at Somerset Station compared to the surrounding stations uh, on the Market Frankfurt Line and probably for the entire Market Frankfurt Line, uh, more uh, quality of life uh, citations have been issued there than any other station uh, on the Market Frankfurt Line. And so uh, um, combined with the increased visibility uh, at Somerset Station, uh, we've been able to uh, really uh, 
crackdown, if you will, on uh, quality of life type of crimes such as loitering, uh, drinking, um, uh, and uh, those type of summary uh, types of offenses. And uh, except the police have always relied on uh, focusing on quality of life and the broken windows theory because our belief is that if you focus on minor crimes, that tends to bring down the more serious crimes. Uh, there's also uh, CCTV uh, cameras at the stations on the Market Frankfurt Broad Street Line and Subway Circus Line. And that's part of our Smart Stations project. Uh, Smart Stations is a $90 million project uh, that involves um, interfacing with uh, our CCTV cameras with other life safety and security systems such as uh, fire suppression system, intrusion uh, systems. We also have our emergency call boxes located at each of the stations including uh, Somerset Station. So uh, Smart Stations project uh, entails placing cameras throughout the entire system. Uh, we're also involved with the project of putting uh, the cameras on board all of the uh, uh, cars on the Market Frankfurt line and the Broad Street line. And by uh, 2013, all of the train cars will be equipped uh, with cameras on board. Uh, but uh, at the Somerset station, the cameras have been there um, at least for the past year and a half or so. And um, it has uh, been somewhat instrumental in um, uh, serving as a deterrent, our belief is, as well as um, instrumental with um, uh, making uh, some arrests. The uh, other thing that we do uh, that's positive is our collaboration with the Philadelphia Police Department as well as the school police. And uh, we deal uh, on a daily basis with the 24th, 25th, and 26th district in one way or another. Um, as well as send our uh, police officers to ComStat meetings uh, with the school police. We also uh, try to keep a rapport with uh, community groups in the area. Uh, Rock Ministries is uh, one of the uh, community groups uh, that are located in the immediate vicinity of Somerset Station. And our officers do exchange, uh, you know, some information uh, with uh, Rock Ministries and other community groups. And uh, going back to the police, we do uh, exchange intelligence with uh, Philadelphia Police Department and the school police as well as, as well as your investigative units. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you for watching. And again, thank the Rock Ministries. Doing a great job out there. Thank you.